Welcome back to this session of uh, Active Living at the Orient Center. Our next guest is Jim Hubbard. Jim is with us from the uh, VFW Post 334 in uh, Northern Oakland County. Yes. And uh, we welcome him to our show. Jim is a, a Vietnam veteran and uh, we're gonna talk to him about his experiences in the Vietnam War. Thank so you. Jim, welcome to our show. Well, it's nice to be here. So when did you uh, join the service? Well, actually, I took a different route. I was drafted into the service. Uh, June of 1965, I graduated from school, and it was just a few days later, and I've got the induction notice. Uh, I lived on a farm, uh, the oldest of 12 children. Uh, my father came around the corner of the barn one day, he had this piece of paper, and he shook my hand and said, son, it's time for you to do your duty. Uh, my grandfather served in World War I, he served in World War II, it was time for me to go to Vietnam. So he just said, uh, make the family proud, and uh, shook my hand, and uh, a few days later I was off for training. Wow. Yep, that's well, kind of how it went. The same thing almost happened to me. Yeah. I, I graduated from college and I was number three on the draft list yeah. in Burlington, Vermont. Okay. But fortunately, I didn't go in during the time of war. Yeah. So you went in, uh, did you, where did you go to boot camp? Or I shouldn't say boot camp, I should say basic training. Basic training was at Fort Leonardwood, Missouri. Okay. And then I went to South Carolina for advanced training. Uh, infantry all the way, okay. Army infantry, uh, specialized in carrying an M60 machine gun. Uh, left uh, uh, the, uh, I'm sure I wasn't, I, the night that we did ship out uh, from Fort Dix, New Jersey to go to Vietnam, we knew we were not going to fly. It was a snowstorm beyond snowstorm. That was the Christmas of 1966. Uh, Christmas Eve 1966, we loaded this transport plane, uh, had like 500 of us men hanging on the side of the inside of the plane. Uh, an army tank rolled in, a deuce and a half rolled in, and another jeep, and I thought, oh my goodness, this plane is never going to leave the ground. <laughs> and uh, we left the ground Christmas Eve 1966, flew uh, one stop uh, layover in Hawaii to refuel the plane, and then the next stop we were in Saigon. They didn't so, give you any R&R &R in Hawaii while you there were there. There was only off the plane <laughs> for refueling and back on the plane. Oh, man, and what so a shame. I spent uh, just a couple of days after Christmas, my first day in, in Saigon. Wow. Uh, kind of a scary situation for a young guy, 19 years old, um, almost 20. Uh, but uh, the very first night, or that day, that day on KP, uh, washing dishes, looked up, and a helicopter was just flying over, a small one that uh, directed uh, artillery in. Right. Yeah, the rotor fell off the plane, or the air, the helicopter. The, pl the helicopter hit the ground. The boys were killed instantly, oh. fried to death in the fire. It was just, what have I got myself into? It that was, was your first day? The first day. Wow. Very first day. And I thought, oh, Lord, I certainly hope I get out alive. It's a hairy experience. It is for being you know, just about 20 years right. old. Uh, it was just, uh, what a rude awakening to the real world yeah. of combat. Well, so, so from there, I assume you were assigned to some, some infantry division or some infantry uh, group. Yes, uh, once you get there, then they divide. Where do they need people? Right. Uh, I was assigned to the 196th Light Infantry Air Mobile. So we were assigned helicopters. When anybody was in distress, we were to be on our helicopters to fly into different areas, uh, hot LZs they call them, uh, right. with machine guns blazing and save whoever was being attacked. And, and then from that point, uh, a couple of months of that, and then we were actually just basically in the jungle all the time. So you were, when you were a machine gunner, were you a machine gunner like from, from the helicopters or were you actually no, on the we ground? Were just, we were just sitting in the helicopters till we landed and then we went, went for support. We left the choppers and went just basically for support, wow. whoever was under fire. So, so actually you, you, you were, you were in, on a hot situation a lot of, a lot of the time because you were we would supporting. Lose, at the time we would lose uh, probably uh, 50 men a month were killed at least, wow. and sometimes it's closer to 100 every month. When I was in Vietnam in 1966, early part of the war, we were losing 1,000 men a week. Wow. Every week, 1,000 men. Wow. A at least, and sometimes more. Uh, it was hot and heavy. I so. looked at some of the statistics before we started the show, and it, it, we had over 33,000 people killed in, uh, 
in that war, didn't we? Oh, it was 53,000. 53. 53,000, 53, right. Wow, yep. that's, a, that's an amazing number. It is, it is. And so, so now you go into the, one of these hot zones where you, there's a firefight underway. Right. And you're out there helping the guys that are under fire. That's right. We try to push past them and push the firefight off of them so they, they can take care of their wounded men right. and, uh, and pull back and, and re-supply re, uh, water mostly ammunition get get everybody uh, feeling better because when you you lose a lot of water it's quite an intense situation you're under for a few minutes i believe that. i mean it, it's sweat you just you're moving with everything you do to stay about stay alive as best you can wow yeah it's it's quite a different uh, world war is oh i believe that yeah, right. i believe that uh, in one aspect um, you didn't really have many friends you really couldn't in the Vietnam War because there were sometimes uh, young men would come. Uh, so twice this happened to me. I was a squad leader. Right. Um, that in the morning, a young man would be assigned to our platoon, and I didn't even know his name, and he already died by the end of the day. Ugh. It happened to me twice. That's terrible. Uh, lost my very best friend there. Uh, we were on the side of a mountain looking down on this uh, area that uh, our company was laid out. We went up the mountain about three clicks. And uh, looking down, we could see the, the Viet Cong moving in on us. And I, I would radio where I see them. And uh, they would send out a patrol trying to intercept them. Right. But you'd have to radio to the base. The base had to radio to them. And we would see them moving in, in what tree they were behind or whatever. But the delay, the delay, the delay would cause uh, uh, my very best friend at the time. Uh, I, of course, I didn't know I was high in the mountain. I didn't know, but he uh, was leading the, the patrol and uh, they, he, they killed him. Wow. So I had to live with that uh, the last 46 years and I led my very best friend, very best friend to his death. That's terrible. It, it was, uh, it's been a little bit of a problem, but uh, we lived through it. We uh, dedicate our lives now to other things uh, uh, Related to veterans. Now, when you when you were there, uh, were you injured in the in the war? Uh, yes, I uh, happened to uh, lose my right arm and got shot in the back. I lost my right hip. Um, went through about nine months of surgeries, about wow. twenty surgeries to put me back together to come back. That's so. real. That's a real service to your country. Yeah, uh, they they gave me a, a silver star for my valor, and which I'm very proud of. Uh, but I, the best thing is that I did survive the war. Right. Right. And, and when you were injured, I assume they send helicopters in to yeah, that was have a, a, a medevac that, kind of uh, that's right. situation. Yeah, just like a mash on mash on TV. Right. Uh, you know that the helicopter was away. The captain knew I was hurt. He called. He saw the chopper. He called him in. They threw me on and took me right to a little mash unit. Threw me off the helicopter on a jeep on the hood of a jeep down to the tents. And I remember seeing the doctors standing above me and. Uh, they, you know, telling me you're going to be okay, and the next thing you're out, you know, right. and you wake up a couple of days later, you know, the arm's gone, and you're kind of patched up, and you know, then I went to uh, the Philippines, or no, uh, Fort, D uh, let's see, yeah. I believe it was the Philippines that they shipped you to out of uh, Vietnam. I went to the Philippines, and then I went to Yokohama, Japan. After that, I was spent nine months in Yokohama having surgeries, putting me back together. Wow. Then come through Alaska to Fort Dix. Uh, and then to Valley Forge, Pennsylvania, for another three months or so, learning to use a prosthetic. Right, and stuff right. Like that, right. Now, how long were you actually in Vietnam? Nine and a half months. Wow. Yep. So you Nine saw a lot of battles, a lot of, lot of, lot of things going on while you were there. Uh, yeah, there was quite a bit of action. You know, you're in a war situation every single day. You yeah. Know? So it's not like a. I'll have to say this. Uh, I'm, I'm sure some people will think it's kind of crazy, but. For nine and a half months, I never took my shoes off, never took my clothes off, never had a chance to, always at the ready. Really? For nine and a half months. And if I had survived the whole year, I never would have, never changed your clothes. You were in the jungle. We never ate, I never had a hot meal the entire time I was in Vietnam. We ate sea rations, and usually the date on the sea rations were, you know, packaged in 1953, 1955. Wow. We never had any new sea rations, but. Those boys in Afghanistan now are eating the same sea rations that were probably packaged in the 70s, so <laughs> in the 80s. Yeah, so, right. yeah, they just come from the supply. 
I guess the guys in the Navy are lucky then. Huh? Yeah, they get <laughs> they, they get they, a warm meal they, every they once get, in a while. They get warm meals. Every yeah, day. right. Yeah, infantry guys are treated a little different. Boy, I'll tell you, you yeah. you you guys have gone through a heck of a lot. Yeah, some and, of uh, us have. You, I'm sure you're going to meet Randy Stetson in a little while. Yep. I mean, I was shot up a little. Randy was shot up a lot. Yeah. So, and uh, he's a, a, a gentleman that lost his arm also in really? the war. Really? Yep, in Vietnam, and and he's got quite a story to tell about that. But uh, you'll you'll uh, get informed when you I interview Randy. But now that you're back, you're taking part in a lot of lot of activities for veterans. Absolutely. You're, you're the post commander now. Post commander. Post 334. Of, uh, post 334. Yes. Right. North Oakland Post 334. And you're heavily involved now in the in the, uh, in the, 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 the memorial. The memorial. Uh, we have uh, the National Home for Children we take care of. We uh, we have a book drive now and. Uh, we, we just do everything to help the community and help uh, other veterans. I have service officers, you'll meet some of them to, uh, today or tomorrow whenever you uh, interview them, that uh, they have dedicated all their time to take care of uh, the veterans and make sure that they get what's due them, but basically get them organized so if something happens to them, they can get direct service to the hospitals. We right. take them there, uh, get their surgeries or whatever they need is and and bring them home and, and watch after them and take care of them it's a lot of responsibility isn't it it, it is a little bit but uh i look forward to it i i, I take on the challenge uh, i like to be busy so this does keep me busy the sounds like does. you're really busy yeah, it does yeah <laughs> well i like the the memorial it's, it's close to my heart too you know right i, I like the the things that happen there i like the services we have there the post duties uh they're uh, the uh the quite active post like mm -hmm. Ernie was telling you, it's a quite active post when we do everything in the community with the parades, uh, support any organization that needs help. Uh, it, we're just up to date with everything we do. And you have a fantastic museum up there. I yes, understand. we do. We have. And I hope Mr. Parker is able to come and you'll a be able to interview him. He is the caretaker of the, of the uh, museum. Uh, he's got over 500 uniforms on display and weapons of all, all sorts and kinds that... Uh, it's a very nice thing to do is to come to the post and, and look at the museum. Can, it, can anybody go up there Any and go through that? Anytime after 10 o'clock in the, in the morning, the post opens at 10, and it's open through like 10 or 11 at night. So anybody can come and enjoy So you'd themselves. encourage our viewers Absolutely. To, to go up and... Uh, come to the post. Great. Uh, it's up on Joyner Road, East Joyner Road, just off 24. The helicopter sits out in front, and uh, if you come... Uh, they'll show you the showcases. Uh, it's something to look forward to. Well, maybe in the future, what we can do is do a, do another ONTV show right from the museum. Oh, that would be wonderful. You know, yeah. we, I think it's we could something that the public probably doesn't that even know here that quick. exists. You know, yeah. and uh, it, it would be a beneficial for the public to understand what's there. Yep. Well, terrific. We've got uh, we're we're coming pretty close. Is there anything you know that you like to tell the public before? Uh, we wrap this up. We're getting very close to the end here. Well, I think uh, if they could just remember veterans. Uh, when uh, the Vietnam era, uh, some of the boys came home, it wasn't a pleasant experience. Right. It's been a goal of mine. Uh, as you can see, I, I raised money for the Fallen Heroes Monument at our at the memorial right uh, that was all brought about because I wanted these young boys that, that come home to see that positive uh, support that the veterans us that it went before them right we want them not to have that negative experience there right. was just too much negative um, from the Vietnam War it just okay. went on too long well and you guys are there, yeah you guys Anything are doing a lot do. to hopefully turn that around absolutely we need to do that okay Jim we'd like to wrap up this segment we're going to move on to the next one okay well, we certainly want to thank you very much for your uh, service thank you so thank much you for, for having coming me on here. ONTV all right thank you thank you